Hey, hey, hey. It's episode two of Telling Bible Stories with Tola. I dropped the first one last week and the feedback has been great. Uh, you guys have shown me so much love. I'm so overwhelmed right now, I must say. Uh, a lot of comments, a lot of people shared comments. I really wish I could read messages, but we have to get straight to today's story. Today's story, I bet you're going to love it. It's titled The Beef Squashing Letter. It's a story about Paul, Onesimus, and Philemon. Welcome to the Telling Bible Stories podcast. Experience the Bible come alive as we unravel its beauty using today's language. And now, your storyteller, Tola Omoni. Onesimus was a slave to his master Philemon and let's just say things didn't go pretty well between both of them. It was so bad that Onesimus had to run away. So he ran away from his master Philemon, headed for Rome. When he got to Rome, while moving around in Rome, he met Paul. Paul reached out to him, preached to him, told him about Jesus, led him to a personal relationship with Jesus. Now, after leading Onesimus to Christ, Onesimus probably didn't have anywhere to go, so he stayed with Paul. He starts to serve Paul, starts to render help in every way Paul needed. He helped him with ministry, helped him with a lot of personal stuff, and became more like a right-hand buddy to Paul. And this happened for quite a while. But eventually, because he opened up to Paul and Paul knew about everything that was up with him before the point when he met him. Eventually, Paul is like, you know what, boy? You gotta go back. You have to go back to your master. You are a runaway slave and you have to do what's right. You have to go back to your master. Now, here is the dicey part of this relationship. His master, Philemon, happens to be a personal friend to Paul. Look at that. So this is a triangle relationship here. Three men would know each other, but do not have a common relationship. And this happens a lot to some of us. You have a friend who is actually enemies to another friend of yours. So the th <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say. On this note, it's even more dicey because Philemon is obviously not happy with Onesimus. Onesimus is not happy with Philemon. Um, Paul is kind of in between right now. You know, sometimes they say your, your friend's enemy is your enemy. <laughs> anyway, so Paul is now sending Onesimus back to Philemon. But he does something really, really interesting. He tries to reconcile their relationship. Today's story is um, quite straightforward and simple. Maybe short, because I'm just going to read you a letter that Paul writes to Philemon. So Paul says, you know what? I'm going to write to my friend Philemon, who is your master, and see how we can sort this issue between both of you. Here's how the letter goes. Philemon, my dear friend, greetings to you, your family, and the church that meets in your home. I pray for you on a regular basis. I thank God for the love you have for the Lord Jesus Christ and for fellow believers. Those who meet you are encouraged in their faith. Dear brother, you know me. I don't normally hesitate in telling you what is right and wrong. I am usually quick in reminding you of your duties in Christ. But this time, I'm not going to do that. Instead, I'm going to beg. Now picture this in your mind. I'm an old man who is in prison for the cause of Jesus Christ. In my weakness, God sent me a helper, Onesimus, a man who caused you pain and grief. But God sent him to me and I was able to introduce him to Jesus. He yielded his life to Christ and then he became a very valuable person to me. He became invaluable to me as a matter of fact. And he has really helped me. In a way, 
I can almost say it's like you sent him here to help me because you couldn't come yourself. I don't know how I can carry on without him. But he and I both know he should go back to you. He was helping me in your stead, but we didn't have your permission. Listen, he was a worthless slave when he ran away from you. Now he's coming back as a valuable brother in Christ, a co-worker in the ministry, and a dear friend of mine. Please receive him back in love. Oh, concerning those things I stole from you, put those on my account. Here, I will pick up the quill and write this in my own handwriting. I, Paul, will repay you. I want to remind you of the fact that you actually owe me your own very life. Please receive him as if you were receiving me. You'll bring joy to my life when I hear how you've accepted Onesimus back into your life and into your home. But what am I even talking about? I know you'll do this and even more. I trust you, Philemon. <laughs> You're my guy. <laughs> By the way, prepare your guest room for me. I know you've been praying. I know you've been praying I'll be set free and come back to visit you. And I think God is going to answer your prayers really soon. So expect me home. Greet all my good friends who are out there with you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Paul That's the story right there. Quite an emotional one. I can hear love in this letter. I can hear brotherhood in this letter. I can hear forgiveness in this letter. And of course, I can hear a lot of reconciliation. And for some of us, we are in the position of Philemon. You have this employee who just did you wrong. And after training him or her, he left your organization. And he left with certain things. He probably stole some things from you. And he probably went to another organization. So you are really bitter with this person at this moment. And you are in the shoes of Philemon right now. For some other person, you are the Onesimus. At that time, before you gave your life to Christ, you did some really bad things. <laughs> you did some really bad things. Uh, but the interesting thing is, after you did those bad things, you met with Jesus. He changed your life. But sometimes it's good to just go back and make things right. But you know, it could be very hard. And that's where Paul comes into play. And for some of us, we are in Paul's shoes. Paul is more like the most influential of all three of them. Paul could have chosen to keep Onesimus with him because he really did need Onesimus with him to help him and do a lot of other stuff. But hey, he knew that he had done Philemon a lot of help in the past. But he didn't. This is, this, is, this is the height of conflict resolution because speaking to Philemon, he didn't just try to just go all, ah, I'm your big brother, you need to do this, you need to... No, no, he came through and he appealed to him to just do what's right. So many lessons to learn from this actually. Remember at the start of the letter, Paul talks about how he constantly prays for Philemon despite the fact he's in the prison. And at the end of the letter, he talks about the fact that he knows that Philemon has been praying for his release and that God is going to answer his prayers. There's just a lot of lessons to learn from this. How about we do this for this particular episode? Go on social media, on Twitter or on Instagram with the hashtag TBS Philemon. TBS Philemon. And just share with me whatever lesson that you have learned from this one. And that's a wrap for this episode. I'll catch you on the very next one with a fresh story from the Bible. And hey, do me one favor, would you? Share this with a friend. It just might help the person. I believe it will. So I'll see you. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoyed every bit of today's Telling Bible Stories with Tala. Do remember to subscribe and share with your friends.